Jesus some praise. My help. My help. All of my help. Cometh from the Lord. Has he been good to you? Has he been good for you? Just where you stand, just praise his name. Where you stand with the Most High, praise his name, hallelujah. unto you from God the Father in Jesus Christ our reigning our returning our redeeming Lord because this is the day the Lord hath made and will rejoice and be glad in it you know you can make a lot of things you can make a sweet potato pie you can make a cake you can even make money, but you can't make a day. Only the Lord can. And I thank him for this day. Thank him for this day. Thank you, Lord. That ought to give you reason to shout right there and the praise goes right there and the praise goes there and the, and the praise goes there. Bless the name of the Lord. Greetings, I am Elder Hugh Terra. I've been chosen and anointed and appointed by this incredible man of God to, to feed you the word as he has fed it to me in the apostle, William T. Ford Sr. You know, I, I see people that are very, very uh, proud of the university they came from, particularly those at Ohio State University. And they don't say, I went to Ohio State University. They say, that's the Ohio State University. I sit under a man who's not just an apostle, not just somebody you know. That's a God-ordained apostle. That is the William T. Ford Sr. And a praise goes there. Greeting and honor to my beautiful wife, D. High Terror. I call her, I call her Baby D. Kind of like from the Fire Heartbeat. She keep me together, y'all. She is my heartbeat. Amen. Respect and honor to the usher ministry. As in our brother, Elder Barber, I call him Elder Barber, and I don't know if Mary Smith's here today, I sit under the usher ministry, I'm attached to that. And the men's ministry, Deacon Derek Robertson. I don't know if y'all realize the day and age we're in, but sometimes it's hard being a man. But you gotta get up and walk like somebody and the men's ministry will help you do that. We meet every third Saturday of every month. Amen. Derek Robinson heading it up. My ministerial leader, Dr. Gwen Brooks. <laughs> Prophetic lady. And the heartbeat, I call him the heartbeat of this church. My man, you heard him a little bit earlier. Pastor Raul Wallace. And Lady Juanetta Wallace. They're just awesome. They're awesome. They're awesome. They're awesome. 
I'm going to give some respect to the AV ministry brother Barry Pulliam. Elder Barry Pulliam's up there and Tina's up there. We may be live streaming and if you're live streaming with me right now or if you're right here, you could be anywhere in the world but you're here with us. And it's the right time and it's the right place. Amen. Without further ado, let us get on to the scripture. Let us go into the word of God. Let us put up John the seventh chapter starting at the first verse John 7 and 1 we're gonna do declaration no need with the declaration if you could direct your Bible to John 7 and 1 st. John 7 and 1 signify you there by saying amen that's enough for me sound like good stuff and the word reads after these things Jesus walked in Galilee and he did not walk to he did not want to walk into Judea because the Jews sought to kill him now the Jews feast of tabernacles was at hand his brothers somebody say his brothers therefore said to him depart here and go into Judea that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing for no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly if you do these things show yourself to the world for even his brothers did not believe in him then Jesus said unto them my time has not yet come but your time is always ready i want to lift for a title tonight there's never been a better time than now you may have your seats in the presence of the lord there's never been a better time than now our blessing and our gift in the apostle William T. Ford projected, prophesied, and preached with profundity last year a message and a series entitled The Hour. It was a difference maker. It was something that really shook my soul. It got down into my spirits, and I hope it did yours too. Because he delineated and demystified the Greek language as it pertains to time. He broke down what is a chronos time versus a kairos time. Chronos time can be given either in location or position as it pertains to longitude and latitude. It's a linear suspense of time. It's how you measure month, day, year, day, hour, second. But he really enthusiastically gave us the word in terms of a kairos time because the kairos time is due measure. It's a small time. It's a big time. It's a fixed and definitive time. The time when things are brought to crisis, the decisive, the decisive epoch waited for an opportune and seasonable time. It is the right time. Simply put, it's God's ordained time. It's God's seminal moments. It's his signature moments. It's his sentinel moments. It's the time that God made for me and you. As we contextualize John 7, getting back to that, we find Jesus having conversation with his brothers. Now, it doesn't take a lot to understand something that his brothers don't really care for him that much. It says in verse 3 that why don't you go on to Judea knowing good and well there were people in Judea that wanted to kill him. Secondly to this fact in verse 4 it says for no one does anything in secret while himself seeks to be known openly. Obviously they don't have the name, they don't have the heart of our Jesus because he's not big on just being open and showing off. He didn't, they didn't necessarily have what Jesus had pumping through him. 
which only goes to show you and something to speak to your spirit that sometimes family might mean you no good. That could be church family, that could be your biological family. Sometimes they ain't got the right word for you. More things over. This is why the Bible says, love not the world nor the things of this world. For all this of this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not all about the world. And in verse 7, it says, further down, Jesus breaks up the text and he says, the people of the world cannot hate you. They hate me because I tell them the evil things that they do. This is why speaking the word of God, whether it's in current climate or whether it's any time else, might not make you the popular person that you want to be. You're not going to win any popularity contest speaking the word. You're not going to get invited to the party saying God's word. You're not going to do all those nice things because those things are made for the world. And you don't have to be ba feel bad or be set apart. But I will tell you this, when you speak God's word, you settle what was in heaven and you're settling it down on earth. And remember this, I learned this one a while ago. Well, God dropped this in my spirit. Them same ones that's patting you on the back today are just seeing where the soft spot is so they can put the knife tomorrow. That's free chicken, y'all can take that one with you. But even with this, Jesus offers them encouragement and opportunity, saying, my time has not yet come, but your time is always. Even speaking the way they were speaking and meaning him no well good, he still had a word for him that your time is going to come. You're going to get it one of these days. You got to thank God for his ever loving mercy, his ever loving grace, because it's a lot of us. If we contextualize that thing one minute and we found out the family meant us no good, why don't you go on up there where they trying to kill you? I don't have nothing to do with you and I ain't got nothing to do with you no more. But we serving a wonderful and merciful God. Thank God he ain't got those nasty human attributes that sometimes peep out and creep out on us. Amen? Our time is a Kairos time. It's always given with clarity and validity in the fact that there's not a better time than now. The word now can cover an era. The word now can cover an age. It can cover a season. It can cover everything that you're doing in this present happening. It is where past doesn't quite meet future. It's right now. There's an old saying, yesterday is a mystery. Yesterday is history, tomorrow a mystery. Today is the gift. That's why they call it the present. We operate under an eternal God, and you've got to get an eternal God in your spirit. You've got to get somebody who can see far beyond that, because the Bible says a thousand years to him is merely a day, and a day a thousand years. There's a wonderful movie a long time called Amistad, a long time ago. And in this movie, it featured a slave revolt by a cat named Joseph Sinke. And he was on trial up in the New England States. And Matthew McConaughey played uh, John Mahunsu's lawyer, and he had an interpreter, and he wanted him to understand, he wanted to get an understanding of what was going on with these quote-unquote slaves from Africa. And he draws the United States on the dirt. And then he draws Africa on the dirt. And he says, see, this is the U.S. You came from here, right? And Sinke looks at it. And he says, I came from here. 
because in Matthew McConaughey's mind, he couldn't get the fact that it was a small boat ride. He was thinking it's just something just right on across the water. But to a slave who's been locked up, a slave who was shackled up for more than six or eight weeks and through storms and through all kinds of tussles and everything else, this was no mere boat ride like you going to the fair and going on the boats. He had to understand the lineage and the perspective of space as it opposes to time. This is how God deals in an eternal. While we in our personal lives, while we as humans are looking at an instant, man, we think, man, it's sure taking a long time when you're waiting for your food at Burger King. When the traffic light won't quite change. My God deals in an eternal time. It is long, it is decisive, and what he has done is created Kairos moments for you in this eternal time. Isaiah 57 says, Thus saith the high and the lofty, one that inhabits eternity. The Message Bible says he lives in eternity. And he created this time for you and for me. I say it like this, to God, the chronos time is merely a stitch in the fabric called eternity. But Kairos time is sewn and woven in moments of decision outlined in a pattern of purpose. As a tailor lays over that fabric and stitches it up, time is just merely a stitch to God. But he's woven this thing in a pattern in the form of Jesus for you to make some decisions, for you to get off the snide, not later, not back then, but right now. You can't do nothing about what's past. You can't do nothing about what Mary might have did, and this lady might have did, and that dude did, and that dude did. What you can control Control is the Kairos moment that God has given you right now and it is no better time than now Kairos time could be immediate it could be sudden the Bible says in him we live we move and we have our being Christopher Bridges some of you might know him as Ludacris had a song a few years ago that says when he move we move just like that It's no need for deliberation. It's no need for discussion. It's already done. It's no debate. When he move, we move just like that. That's called progressive revelation. Digging Dober. It meant something else five, six years ago. But when you spend time with the word of God, some of that old stuff, hold on. I think God was talking to me then too. Have you been there? Amen. Glory to God. Let me show you something. To really magnify this, I have this clock. You know, they say a broken clock is right twice a day. But see, I found this clock. And if you look all around it, it says now, 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 now. I take this thing to work. When they ask, hey, when you want me to do it? Mm -hmm. When does that report need to be done? Mm -mm. And then I go into my boss office, when I'm gonna get a raise? There's simply never been a better time than now. See, God's perspective is a lot different than mankind. He's above everything and outside the sphere of time. It is not limited to physical laws. He's not limited to dimensions of govern that, that govern the world. That physical time that you and I see, God already has seen it and he's judging your befores and he's judging your afters in a space and time continuum you just can't get a hold of. Now here's the beautiful thing. You part of the plan. He 
he invented the time or he created the time. God creates everything. He's awesome. For the devil. A lot of the Bible features time constraints for the devil himself. If you look at Revelation 20, we can pull that up right now. And the word of God reads, then I saw an angel descending out of heaven. He carried the key to the abyss and a chain, a huge chain. He grabbed the dragon, that old snake, the very devil, Satan himself, chained him up for a thousand years. He puts a time constraint on the devil, but he is offering me and you and your children eternal life and everlasting. That's simply amazing because no matter where you are in the degree you are, no matter what position you're in, whether it be salvation, whether it be sanctification, whether it be sonship, whether it be discipleship, my God has made it so you can have a right now moment. If you're not in the family, get in now. If you have salvation, you need sanctification, so grow now. If you got sanctification, you need to work on your servitude, so be a son like a son is to his dad now. If you're doing all those things and you got it all together, duplicate it now. You've got a chance, you've got an opportunity. No, you have a duty that you know God and he separated you from what Satan has to deal with and he's made it so you can have everlasting and eternal life with him. Say amen. The demons even know of how incredibly powerful Jesus is in Kairos moments. Go to Matthew 8 chapter, the 28 verse. Matthew 8 and 28. Amen. It's up. And the word reads, two demon-possessed men get healed. When he had come to the other side, to the country of Gerganes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus, the Son of God? Have you come to torment us before the time? See, this leaves the devil and his messages and everybody else quaking in their boots. This leaves them shaken. This leaves them stirred because in the name of Jesus, everyone must bow. Every tongue must confess. Every knee goes down and everybody has to say, this is the son of the living God. And while the, the, the tormented demons understood that, we can't get a lot of people to understand what this is really all about. These are demon-possessed men, but they know that's Jesus, and they know it's a time that they're going to be they're going to be dealt with. Amen. Now check this out. Torment in the uh, Greek in the Greek means uh, a word called basinosis. Basinosis. It is a black silicus rock that they used to use in Greek days to rub against metal to find out if this was pure gold or pure silver. This is some pain medicine for some. This is affirmation for others. But sometimes the things that torment you are needed to find out what is pure in your life. And when those demons didn't have it, 
they knew it was coming time. Oh, Lord, it's sure coming time. Amen? To deny God, he'll deny you later. It's a beautiful thing about time. They make movies, they make songs about time after time. What time is it? I remember one lady said, I ain't got time for that. Time is a wonderful and a beautiful thing if you're in the kingdom of God. But if you're demon possessed, demon feel, this is a constraint on your life. This is an execution day waiting for you. You're just like one of them people on death row. In your spirit, Lord Jesus. But he offers you right now moments. He offers you Kairos moments. He offers you time to come to him. He offers you time to be perfected. He offers you time to be delivered. He offers you time to be redeemed. And when should we do this? When should we come after it? When should it happen? When is it going to happen for me? What time does it happen? It's going to happen right now. There's never been a better time than now. See, Satan and uh, the elder Deidre, man, she, Elder Clark just told us up the other day, I was like, Lord, have mercy. She went all the way back and, and, and even before Adam and Eve, Satan, called Lucifer, was up in heaven with God. But he was saying a few things, and this is up in uh, Isaiah 14. You can read that on your own. He said, I'll take God's place. I'm going to ascend to heaven. I'm going to exalt my throne. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then God had a Joe Clark moment from lean on me and said, I threw that bastard out. And that's all I got to say. Go to Galatians 6 and 7 for me. Galatians 6 and 7. Yeah, he threw him out. You talking like you, the living God, you talking like you bad. You have to watch your mouth every now and again. Because the spirit of Lucifer can rise up on you. Because I hear a lot of people talking about, it's all about me. You don't know me in here. And then the first thing they say, where they from? Yeah, <laughs> I'm from South Bridge. I'm <laughs> I'm from North Side Rich. You don't know me out here. Don't let these suits fool you. No, don't let God fool you. Keep that stuff in check. When do you need to keep it in check? <laughs> and the word of God reads, and I'm, I think I'm reading from the New Translation, uh, New King James. It says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. For if you soweth of the flesh, you will reap corruption, but he that soweth from the spirit shall reap life everlasting. Remember that eternal life I was talking about. And let us be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. As we have, therefore, opportunity let us do good unto men, especially unto those who are in the household of faith. You know the Greek word for opportunity? Kairos. They are synonyms. Time and opportunity. We usually use that one when we about to fight. Ain't nothing here but an opportunity. But you have an opportunity. Man, as I was listening to, to uh, I'm sorry, Sister Ruby, boy, she was just laying out that phase two and that phase three and that phase four. And as she recanted back in time, how the man of God had visions. And then he brought this thing here and we're right here, right now. It should have been reaffirming 
it should have been speaking and tugging on your heartstrings that if he brought you here, he can do that. And he can do that. And he can do that. And it's not all about selfish ambition. He don't ever get up and say, look at me, look at me. Everything he wanted, everything he's visioned is in order to help people. In order to fulfill the dreams and aspirations, the Kairos moments, the patterns and decisions made for the kingdom of God. Praise God right there, everybody. Praise him, praise him. You have an opportunity. Now, how does this tie into vision? Romans 13, 11, please. Romans 13, 11. Boom. A.V. on it. And that knowing the time that now is high time. Watch this now. To awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we ever believed. See, this correlates to vision because sleep in the Greek is hypnos. I'm going to flow a little bit metaphorically and figuratively to you on this connotation. It can, all, it can be a verb. It can be resting. It can be dormant. It can mean not awake. But here's something else. Sleep is also a noun. Sleep is an obstruction in the eye that you get while you're asleep and not awake. It can be gummy, it can be gritty, and it can obstruct the vision. The prophets of the church in the body of Christ represent the eyes. They are your seers. And when you're asleep and not awake and you're dormant and your central nervous system has shut down and you haven't done anything and you won't do anything and you're sitting there and you get look like a knot on a log, you're obstructing, you're obstructing the vision that the seers are having. There is something to be said for having vision. The wonderful thing about vision is even if you blind, you can have visions. You can be look, you can look and just not see. You can have visions but not have sight. The vision is deeper and it's an understanding of what you're doing because the seer of God is seeing that vision. So you need to hop up and get along with it. I'll put it to you like this. That blind man looking, he just can't see. That vision is there, you just can't see it. That's why we say, do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? The vision is there, you just choose not to see it. When do you need to fulfill the vision? When do you need to do something? When do I need to move on it? When does it happen for me? When is this thing coming to fruition? When are we gonna have the center? When are you going to come up with the funds? Answer your own question. I'm closing on this. Go to Hebrews 11 and 1. See, a lot of times we, we be in prayer or we be at uh, intellectual functions and we say faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, faith is the substance of things 
the substance of things prayed for, the evidence of things not seen. But we miss a key component on this Bible verse, and God put it there for a particular reason. The very first word says, if you want the substance and the sustenance, you've got to have the entire word, take nothing away, but only add to it. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now is a moment in time when you're having a Kairos moment. Now is when you make your decision to do some things to help your fellow man. Now is when you fulfill the vision. Now is the era in time that we're talking about. Now is faith. I preached the word, uh, I guess about two, three years ago. And it says, if you don't mind, it really don't matter. It was an awesome one. <laughs> I liked it. I preached, my, I preached myself happy. Amen. <laughs> and I dealt from a kind of a scientific and figurative in God uh, way and rationale of looking at things. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. And everything, every molecule made, everything in this world has substance. And it breaks down to a key component. The foundation of everything is a neutron, an electron, and a proton. They call it an atom. Look at God, man, the foundation of everything that was created and down on this earth for you and me and the Kairos moments that come all originated from Adam. Y'all missed that one. Press, press pause, rewind, and go back. Think about the Garden of Eden. Adam was there first. They're merely borrowing from what God has ordained to come up with a scientific information. But here's the revelation of a difference. Why do I say a revelation of a difference? Because it's the revelation that makes the difference. It's a difference between information and revelation. You can have a whole phone book and put it on your dresser and have it and say, I looked at this whole phone book and you don't know everybody in there. But it takes the revelation of God. It takes prayer. It takes fasting. It takes studying. It takes time in unity fellowship to come up with a revelation that was honed and operated by God. Faith is that substance. And you need faith right now to fulfill a vision. I want to thank you. You've been wonderful, and I hope I poured into your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we continue to give the Lord praise? We're going to release you in just a moment. Thank you, Elder Tara. Thank you awesome wasn't that just absolutely awesomely delivered well put together well presented can we just praise the Lord hallelujah well Tara I, I hope you have another one of those now clocks yeah, you need to give me one of them now clocks because sometimes I'm talking to Pastor Glenn and she asks when if I had that clock I can direct her to that clock. Now, can we just say now? There's never been a better time than now. Can we celebrate now? Just give God praise for right now. Make your way, make your way. We're gonna do this each evening. Make your way to the altar as we close tonight. Uh, Elder Ruby, thank you so much 
Uh, Ruby reminded me as she uh, shared in those few moments on the topic of vision. She reminded me of some things that I hadn't thought about in some time that God had given to me. In, in those days when I was a younger guy, uh, she reminded me of the people that I saw when I looked out of that side door at the old sanctuary and I saw people coming and they were coming and they looked like zombies. They were walking like zombies and they were moving toward that sanctuary years and years ago. Thank you for reminding me. But then I thought and I just got all emotional because saints, at the time I saw this facility, I was probably 18, 19 years old. Our former pastor was still living and I was new to the ministry, sitting in the pulpit there. And it was a Sunday morning and I saw this building. And Sister Ennett didn't know when I saw the building, the crown. I didn't know until sometime later after I had come into the office of the apostle that the crown shape, that front shape of our church is relative to the apostolic crown. And I wasn't even into the office then. In God and now God, in he's awesome God. And I just begin to think about those those moments, those, those times that God gave vision and I just began to realize I repented on my seat because sometimes the, the, the processes of life can steal vision from me. It can steal motivation. It can take the drive. But I'm saying to the kingdom of darkness, I've got my motivation back. I praise the Lord for last year because it was the move of God to pull your leader back into alignment so that I could see again what I'd already seen. I give God praise. <laughs> I give God praise. Can we give God praise for what the enemy intends for evil? God has this wonderful way of turning it around and turning it out for our good. Our preacher for tomorrow night, our preacher for tomorrow night, Elder Sandy Falks is gonna be ministering, and Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Uh, Minister Walker, did she leave? Minister Walker, where are you, baby? No, I was, Laverne, did she leave? Uh, Minister Laverne, you're gonna come and just close us out in prayer. We're gonna join, uh, we're gonna join hands and we're just recommitting this week 